let's have a little look at NXT. So uh, I know that we, we've caught up with our uh, NXT from the WWE Network, and it's yeah. the, the March 11th episode. Um, and, and now... Uh, Every single Wednesday or Thursday, whenever we catch it in the UK, we used to see an NXT at uh, full sale. But uh, this week it was from the WWE Performance Center. Now, I know that we spoke a little bit about the Performance Center and NXT being there and the possibility of SmackDown being there. But uh, it, it, was, it was it had a nice little feel to it and had a bit more of a... I know full sale was quite intimate anyway, um, but and I mentioned uh, about NWA Power. It had that sort of kind of studio feel, that small-time kind of studio feel, uh, that intimate... Uh, feeling and i thought it was really good news even more refreshing to be out of full sale to be honest with you because i think they need to take the product on the road a bit more for their regular wednesday uh, wednesday showing but um, i thought it really really works now uh the, the, the show opened lexi with uh, a, a, a quite an entertaining united states championship match between keith lee and cameron grimes i'm a big fan of those two wrestlers uh this is a really fun opening match between these two with with grimes uh managing to wriggle out of several of uh, keith lee's big spirit bomb attempts um i don't think keith lee was able to hit a spirit bomb on, uh, on cameron grimes despite the numerous attempts um and uh grimes he nearly pulled off a shock win himself with a superb bridging german suplex on the 330 pound Keith Lee uh, yeah. Lee did manage to retain the championship after a devastating uh, pounce on Grimes he kind of pounced uh, Grimes halfway across the ring uh, before hitting Grimes with his kind of jackhammer power slam I'm not entirely sure whether it's got a proper name but uh, quite impressive is what I'm going to call it uh, then <laughs> after the match you had uh, you had Damien Priest he came down to attack uh, Lee from behind with like a telescopic truncheon a telescopic stick uh, before being chased off by Dom Dominic Dijakovic. However, uh, when Lee recovered, the first person he saw was Dijakovic, uh, with Lee giving a uh, spirit bomb to Dijakovic for his troubles, giving us a glimpse of a possible three-way match at TakeOver Tampa in three weeks' time. So a lot to unpick from this from this very action-packed opening match on this week's NXT, Lexi. Um, obviously, Keith Lee didn't know that it was uh, Damien Priest that hit him from behind. He thought it was Dominic Dijakovic. So I kind of like the the storyline there. I, I liked uh, how uh, the, 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 the storyline, the angles evolving. But uh, what, what's your kind of takeaway from this uh, opening match on this week's NXT then? Um, wow. Um, for me, the whole um, Keith Lee uh, spirit bombing Dijakovic yeah. m- makes sense for me purely because he had the title in his hand so obviously two and two together this guy's still after my title kind of thing um it'll be interesting to see where it goes um but i could also see it being a fatal four-way so keith lee dijakovic um 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 damien priest yep damien priest and grimes yeah. Possibly. Um I did have a couple of like sarcastic comments though. Um there was a bit where the uh, Grimes's hat got knocked off the ring post and everybody lost like their minds and I was like the hat is more over than Grimes at the moment. <laughs> Good um, point. And also as well, did you notice the hashtag for that match? No. Right. So the hashtag is NXT NA title. So NXT NA ah. title. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, I saw it and I had to do a double take and I was like, what? So maybe they need to rethink that. Yes, that was lost on me, but well spotted. Thank you very much. <laughs> But uh, that, that was a good opener, a good entertaining opener. But once again, um, it kind of leads you to think that there could be a multi-man match for the North American Championship at TakeOver Tampa. Fingers yeah. crossed, provided it, provided it all goes ahead. And uh, I, I like your kind of fantasy book in there, possibly adding Cameron Grimes into the mix. I'm a big fan of Cameron Grimes. I think he's uh, quite a, a, a big, engaging personality on NXT. And uh, I love what he does on the mic and in the ring. So uh, that's very interesting. But a four-way would definitely work for me. Uh, then we saw Mia Yee 
Kim. She defeated Dakota Kai in a qualifying match for the women's uh, number one contenders ladder match at TakeOver Tampa on the 4th of April. Um, after the match, Yim was attacked by Raquel Gonzalez, possibly uh, giving us a glimpse of uh, a possible feud for Mia Yim uh, with uh, Gonzalez, uh, possibly being the first, having uh, Mia Yim as Gonzalez's first real opponent in the coming weeks. Uh, Yim joins Chelsea Green and Tiga Knox. Tiga Knox also won another qualifying match on this week's NXT. She beat Deonna Perrazzo. Um, and uh, so that's three out of the six competitors all lined up for the women's championship number one contenders ladder match. That's quite a long title for any match if ever I've uh, said yeah. one before. But uh, there's a uh, six women championship number one contenders match at uh, TakeOver Tampa. So, um, yeah, Chelsea Green, Tiga Knox and Mia Yim. So that's uh, three pretty good names. I've got to throw in one name and uh, from an individual that we haven't seen in quite a while. And you probably know where I'm going with this, but we haven't seen it a lot or heard from um, Io Shirai in a number of weeks. And I think she's out with an injury at the moment, but I'm really hoping that she gets entered into that ladder match. So she needs to have a qualified match first. But uh, any thoughts on who you might like to see join uh, Tegan, Chelsea and uh, Mia Yim um, as the other three in this ladder match then? I think we have to have Bianca Belair without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. True. Um, I am still a little unhappy that she's not challenging at Mania. Um just because of the way that she was built up, but that's a different issue for a different day. Yeah. Um, I just... agree with you, by the way. I do agree with you. I, I, I would have liked to have seen, because she's such a striking personality and such a fantastic athlete. Yeah. Um, and I think she's, personally, I think she's more engaging than Rhea Ripley. As much as I like Rhea Ripley, I think that Bianca Belair is more that kind of WWE larger than life personality. And yeah. I think that her against Flair at Mania or her against Flair and Ripley would have made a fantastic triple threat match at Mania. Um, and um, I think that, we saw it at the Royal Rumble that Bianca Belair has megastar written all over her. Yeah. And uh, I think she is ready made for the main roster products, dare I say it. And um, I agree with you. I, I thought that her match a couple of weeks ago on NXT against Charlotte Flair was very good. Yeah. But I think that deserves to be a match in the future on a bigger stage. And hopefully, I'm sure we'll see it between uh, Bianca Belair and Charlotte Flair on a bigger stage in the future. But yeah, I would love to have seen Belair inserted into that match. And um, yeah, for the future. That's a, a yeah. dream for the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just trying to think who else is there on the on the roster. I mean, I know that she's not with the company anymore, but I'd love to have seen Jazzy um, yeah. from NXT UK. Yeah. Um, Tony Storm is possibly yeah. another one. Yeah, good shout. Or maybe uh, Candice LeRae, possibly. Um, I mean, their, their women's division in NXT is absolutely stacked. And like you say, you've yeah. got the potential of throwing in some NXT UK names in there. Maybe a Kaylee Ray. I think a Kaylee Ray, can you imagine her doing her stuff off oh, of the ladder? She's yeah, a daredevil yeah. at the best of times. Yeah. Some of the things she might be able to deliver off the ladder uh, in Tampa will be absolutely fantastic. But um, then we had a really fun batch between Kashida and Raul Mendoza with Kashida delivering a very impressive hoverboard lock transitioning from like, the, the top turnbuckle. Um, first of all, you think they're going to do like a Spanish fly, but then they kind of flip over. Yeah. And when they land, Kushida hooks in uh, the hoverboard. Look very, very impressive. Uh, for, uh, and a quick tap out by uh, Mendoza. Uh, now, a, a quick question for you then, Lexi. We've seen Kushida um, you know, perform that move a few times. And he's, he's been very impressive. I thought he was very impressive for this match. Um, but uh, WWE and NXT, they haven't really pulled the trigger on Kushida. He's been there about nine or ten months now. I think he joined just after WrestleMania. So possibly closer to a year now he's been with the company. Uh, what do you see, you know, as being the plans for Kushida uh, from here on or you know are they going to pull the trigger on Kushida and give him a, a big match or possibly a championship somewhere down the line what, what's the ceiling for the time splitter in NXT or WWE uh, what, what's your thoughts on Kushida I hope it goes differently um, to how Hideo Itami went yeah. um, because he came over and he was absolutely amazing Um and then, obviously, fate got involved and injuries came into play and stuff like that. For me, I would love to see Kishida go through the ranks and work his way up. So, go through the ranks, I don't know, maybe form a tag team with someone and then go up from there. But for me, that match, Kishida versus Raul Mendoza, was match of the night for me. Um, Agreed. You know, so much so that I actually wrote it in the margins you know this is the best match on nxt this week um 
but it, it would be nice um even if they don't have him go for things like the North American title I think he qualifies for 205 live yeah um and the the heavyweight titles uh, sorry the cruiserweight title so for me seeing him with a, a title is definitely down the line somewhere it might be a case of we have to be patient with it because the the roster itself is so stock now because you've blended NXT USA, NXT yeah. UK and 205 Live together. It's only a two hour show. There's only so much you can do. Um, and of course, there are going to be the obvious people that, that get forgotten about or left out. Um, but there we go. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think they, they should wait too much longer before pulling the trigger on Kashida. I think if you leave him too much longer, people will, will forget about him and forget what a fantastic talent he is. And like you say, although he's got a, a bit more of an engaging personality as compared to Hideo Itami, uh, Kenta, um, I think that they've got something special in Kashida. And he's, he's a multiple time junior heavyweight champion in, uh, in New Japan, of course. So I think th- I'd love to see him in the ring with Jordan Devlin. Can you imagine the magic that those two would perform in the ring for the Cruiserweight Championship? Um, and, uh, you know, I don't think it's likely to be on the card for TakeOver Tampa, but that would be a TakeOver worthy match if ever I've seen one. Yeah, possibly TakeOver Dublin if they're going to do it. Good point. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, Jordan Devlin has got to defend his championship in Dublin uh, against somebody. Uh, that would be a pretty awesome match to have Kashida. But um, uh, then we let's see. Uh, then we saw a confrontation, another confrontation between Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair, which ended up in a big brawl inside the ring. Um, and uh, Charlotte Flair even wrapped Rhea Ripley's left leg around the ring post before hooking in a figure four leg lock around the ring post, uh, a la Bret Hart. That's the sort of thing that Bret Hart used to do to his opponents. Um, oh. So, Lexi, you know, what's your thoughts on the on the build between these two? Only three weeks away from Mania. So we spoke a little bit about Rhea Ripley, uh, yeah. uh, Bianca Belair. Air, sorry, uh, we know that Bianca is not going to be involved in the Mania match, but we do have um, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair for Mania for the NXT Women's Championship. Um, are you hyped for this match? Have they got more to do to get you uh, hooked or invested? Or do you think the build has been pretty good already? Um, I am invested, but I'm also annoyed with my investment as well. For me, that match shouldn't happen on the WrestleMania card. It's an NXT title. Keep it in NXT. Because you are going to get people that will want to see the likes of, you know, Charlotte Flair. So they'll tune in if it's on the NXT card. Um, and there's arguments that say, you know, well, actually putting it on the Mania card highlights it. But if, if that came at, like, the, the cost of, say, the Intercontinental title being defended on the card, the main card, not the pre-show, yeah. then no. Um, you know, for me, I am a little bit knocked as well, and I said that before, I am a little bit knocked that Charlotte has been given a chance at the NXT title. Um... Whilst, yes, it makes fantastic storylines and, yes, it's something new, it's something exciting, I'd, I'd still want to see Bianca Belair with the title before Charlotte. That's just me. Um, but while we're on it, can we take a moment to appreciate the fact that Charlotte Flair put that figure four leg lock in, a la Bret Hart, in heels? Well, that's something that uh, uh, I didn't notice. I'm guessing that you you did spot that a mile off, but I didn't. And uh, now that you've said it, I'm all the more impressed. So <laughs> yeah. that's another thing I'm going to have to go back and watch. But uh, in the heels, that uh, could be the move of the week. It could be the, that, that could be the move of the week. But uh, yeah. very impressed now that you've said that. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, yeah, go on. They, they weren't skyscrapers by any stretch of the imagination, but they were still a heel, you know? <laughs> And I was just like, I cannot believe you've just put that in, um, you know, and I'm seeing this side to Charlotte Flair, this more arrogant, heelish side cements why WWE have really pushed her and decorated her as much as she has been. Um, 
yeah, I think it's, don't get me wrong, it's fantastic. I just kind of wanted it to be somebody else. Um, yeah. But there we go. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, and I agree with you. And uh, I mean, that at least... Uh, during TakeOver Tampa, they're going to have that epic uh, six-woman ladder match, which is probably going to steal the show, if not the weekend. Um, but, um, yeah, now that you've said about Charlotte Flair putting on a figure four leg lock around the ring post in heels, she's even gone up in my estimation. So uh, now that you've pointed that out, I'm going to have to go back and watch it. So thank you. Uh, <laughs> then we had uh, this, this week's main event, Lexi. It was the NXT Tag Team Championship match between the Bros Awaits, Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle versus the Undisputed Era. Uh, but before the match, we had an appearance from the Velveteen Dream challenging Adam Cole to a championship match at TakeOver Tampa. Uh, Cole responded by saying that uh, the Dream has not, hurt, the not earned a title shot against against him and tells Dream that uh, next week he becomes the longest reigning NXT champion of all time and will be having a championship celebration. So that'd be something to look forward to. And it almost certainly looks like it's going to be Dream versus Cole um, over mainly weekend at Tampa. Then we go into the match, the Bros Awaits versus the Undisputed Era. Uh, so this is a rematch from their match at TakeOver Portland when the Bros Awaits beat the Undisputed Era to become the champions. Uh, Riddle played a bit of a conductor of sorts as he started a couple of chants aimed at their opponents. That was quite amusing. Uh, yeah. This was a really fun match with uh, with a little exchange between Matt Riddle and Kyle O'Reilly uh, that, that got me all excited. And that's definitely you know a one-on-one encounter that uh, I, I could only dream of uh, seeing in the flesh one day but um, definitely got me intrigued that little encounter there. there there was a really fun segment in this one where Matt Riddle used his partner for a, like a step over um, somersault sent on over the top rope and onto all four members of the Undisputed Era on the outside then Riddle throws Roddy Strong into the ring causing uh, the ref to be distracted uh, while the ref's back was turned Matt Riddle threw Adam Cole into the ring uh, with Pete Dunne feigning uh, being super kicked by Adam Cole in true Eddie Guerrero style, in true Eddie Guerrero fashion, with the referee sending Cole uh, and Strong to the back, uh, no less than they deserved, I'm sure. This was a uh, an unsurprisingly good match with uh, Fish, O'Reilly, Riddle and Dunn, uh, but after having Cole and Strong sent to the back, the Grizzled Young Veterans, GYV, uh, they then came uh, to the ring, they got involved, but after Bobby Fish gets tumbled over the top rope onto GYV on the outside, uh, Dunn and Riddle hit their flash knee strike, kick to the head combo for the pinfall victory, managing to retain their championships in the process. So once again, lots to unpick from this match. Lots of kind of ongoing storylines. And you've got uh, Adam Cole and Roddy Strong getting involved and then being sent to the back. GYV coming out, possibly, you know, setting off, uh, you know, thoughts of maybe a championship match, then being involved in a championship match at TakeOver Tampa, maybe a three-way there. Or certainly GYV could have a, uh, a match against the Bros Awaits. But uh, give us your thoughts on what went down here before we talk about uh, the very exciting uh, thing that closed the show tell us about this tag match and your thoughts about it i loved this tag match um i love pete dunn i'm sad that he's not with the babbies as i call them trent and tyler yeah. um for me that that whole thing and looking back at the stuff that they did in progress was amazing but for me i love the tag team i love i don't know whether you've seen it on social media but there's something called the Flip the Switch Challenge. Yeah, and I put it on the Facebook group last night. It's on yeah, there. <laughs> and I was just like, that's amazing that Pete Dunne's actually done it. Um, you know, I just, and I loved it. I marked out big time when uh, Pete pulled an Eddie, and I actually wrote, Pete, Pete Dunne pulls an Eddie. We do not <laughs> yeah. deserve Peter, um, which is amazing. Um, and it's it's little things like that that I miss about wrestling and you can tell that they're all having fun they're all having fun they all you know get on with one another etc etc which is great um any any opportunity to see Liverpool's number one um is is fantastic um you know so I I can't wait I would love to see grizzled young veterans with the NXT tag, tag titles yeah. but I don't think I'd be able to stand Gibbo in his promos <laughs> going we are now recognised just yeah. like um, <laughs> just like Liverpool Football Club 
Um, no, no. Um, so yeah. yeah. Am, I, am I right in thinking that Zach Gibson is a red? Uh, yes. And you're you're a, you're a blue, aren't you? I am a yeah. And I've I've told Zach Gibson to his face. I met him. Um, oh, late 2018, and I said to him, "I love you as a wrestler. I just don't like." just don't let your team and like it was really nice he was dead sweet about it to be fair um but also um from what i understand james drake is also a red ah. um but yeah every anytime they come out it is you know massive massive representing the you know the liverpool and um, that's why his that's why his suits are always on fire you know um i'm half expecting him to walk out one day and have trainers on with a suit but that's a different issue for a different day um but yeah very very biased towards them absolutely adore them um they broke my heart at takeover blackpool one when they won the tag titles over british strong style but the future is very very bright i would love to see you know three-way match between grizzled young veterans pete and um matt riddle and undisputed era for the tag titles i think that's going to print money no matter how how you look at it no matter if it's just the bros awaits versus the undisputed era again um and grizzle young veterans somehow get involved i think it's going to print money no matter what um so yeah i can't i can't wait to see how that bit that plays out yeah and, and one thing on that and just to kind of pick up on, on your point there is, is I, I'm, I'm really, really um, happy to see how well Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle have gelled together as a team. And we, we know, you know, they're accomplished singles wrestlers and we know that Undisputed Era and GYV, they're accomplished tag teams. They've been tagging with each other for, for, for years. But Pete Dunne and Matt Riddle, I know that they've had their, you know, scrapes on the indie circuit and I think they may have uh, tagged together or wrestled one another for progress, but they, they've gelled so well on NXT, considering they've only had a handful of matches. They've won the Dusty Classic, they, they won the NXT tag team titles and, and to look at them and the way they do uh, flow so well as a team in the ring, you would think they'd been together for years. So to have that possible three-way at TakeOver between three really, really accomplished teams, it, it could very well be you know dare i say another kind of match of the week you know a match of the year contender yeah. but uh, another match yeah that i'm looking forward to most definitely but uh, the action didn't end there lexi so just when we thought you know that the little copyright logo was going to come up at the bottom yep. right hand corner of the screen the show ends with with a promo segment uh you had uh, tomato champer in the ring johnny gargano on the big screen somewhere backstage uh with gargano telling the fans via the, the video wall that uh, everyone seems to have forgotten what champer did to johnny over the last few years Years and asks uh, what Champa has done to be redeemed and feels that he's missing an apology. Uh, this leads to Tommaso leaving the ring to find Johnny which he does in one of the boardrooms backstage where they start to brawl through the backstage area into the medical bay, into the gym area. Uh, Johnny throws Champa in, through a glass door. Uh, that was quite impressive. They, then into some gym equipment. Uh, Tommaso then uh, uh, picks up some weights and throws some dumbbell weights at Johnny, uh, but instead destroys a huge gym mirror. Um, that They fight into the fans um, and uh, Champa and Gargano, they fight their way up onto this little uh, balcony area they, they were calling it the perch area above the commentary desk where gargano slaps on the gargano escape onto tomaso champa the show goes off the air however with uh, tomaso champa dropping himself and johnny gargano off the edge of this perch down onto the commentary desk with a gigantic air raid crash sending both wrestlers crashing through this commentary table down below and then with william regal coming out to check on both wrestlers and then to shout for medical help this was a really hot ending to uh, an excellent episode of NXT. And Lexi, you know, that, that brawl between Gargano and Champa, it, it's kind of got me invested again in their feud. And I must admit, when they started kind of picking it up again following TakeOver Tampa, Tam, t TakeOver Portland a few weeks ago where Gargano turned heel, you know, I, I was kind of semi into it, but I'm all the way into it. And I'm really, really looking forward to next week and the following week and then eventually take over Tampa but this brawl was the kind of the icing and the cherry on top of the cake that was NXT this week but give us your thoughts yeah. on this closing segment to NXT I adored it I I haven't seen a segment like that by WWE for a long long time yeah 
Um, and I know that, that reigniting this rivalry has received a lot of criticism and there's been lots of memes that have been going around of like, you know, loser leaves the care home match and stuff like that. But you know that you are going to get an absolute barnstormer of a match. Um, you know, when you put these two together, um, my my one criticism, though, was what took Regal so long? Like, if Regal was on site, what took him so long to get there? Yeah. Um, that was just my one criticism. But, um, you know, I was worried about the commentators. I was trying to figure out where they all were because of, obviously, the perch being so close to it and I just think it shows that you know I wouldn't say that there's a genuine hate for each other but there's a genuine like of facing each other if that makes sense absolutely and that yeah. comes across um it's difficult because you see where Gargano's coming from but in last week's episode with that interview with Mauro Ronaldo, that really did indicate that we have a different Johnny Gargano now. Um, if it wasn't already hammered home, it it was different. Um, the whole his his entire demeanour had changed and everything. Um, so obviously it makes sense. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes. I think it could be built into a loser leaves NXT match. Ooh, and if that is the case, if it's not at Tampa, as in TakeOver Tampa, it might be after and given other comments that have been made in interviews, I don't think it's going to be Champa that leaves. I think it will be Gargano that leaves. And that possibly yeah. could mean Candice LeRae going as well. Because um, obviously, mm. you know, they're married and there's it's no secret, you know. Um, it's kind of just out there, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that could be where it's going because having read Regal's reaction on Twitter to everything that's gone on I, I don't know if you've seen it but it's basically I'll be speaking with both individuals and we'll be settling it privately in WWE that, ne that never works um, yeah. so yeah um, I do worry though um, that Champa was taking a bit of a ridiculous risk bless him because um, he's been through the wars Um but if he's happy to take those kind of bumps, then I suppose we've got to sort of let him get on with it. But yeah. Yeah, I had exactly the same concerns about that, about that bump. And uh, yeah, I, I thought, is it too much already three weeks out from TakeOver Tampa and taking a bump like that could have put them both out of action. And we all know that uh, Tommaso Ciampa got pulled from that big match that he was scheduled to have uh, 12 months ago take over New York and it didn't happen because of his neck and not only has he had neck surgery he made a quick recovery he was back within seven months but now he's taking ridiculous bumps again um and uh, possibly you know risking further injury or, or uh, reoccurrence of the neck injury um uh, but uh, I'm guessing they they did it as safe as they possibly could and uh, I'm sure they're you know, very sore afterwards but up a walking rounds uh today but um yes as I said, you know, when I was describing this, this segment, it, it kind of it does have me more invested and uh, it's brought me back into their feud, which I was a little bit kind of I, I was interested in the feud two years ago when I was in uh, New Orleans and I saw them wrestle for the first time at TakeOver New Orleans. Wow. Uh, and then they were scheduled to have another match uh, tw only 12 months ago. And mm -hmm. they'd had all these epic matches um, and, you know, the feud had kind of gone off the boil a little bit, but it was meant to be an even bigger and better match because the championship was on the line um but but now 
it all cooled down because of Tomasso being out for so long, and now it's back on again and back on uh, with with a vengeance. So uh, yes, I just hope that they're they're okay today, and uh, like I say, fingers crossed they'll be fit and well for that big match. But just quickly touching on some of the matches that we know are going to go ahead in Tampa, then Lexi. I mean, by the looks of it, now not many of these matches have been formally announced, I don't think, but these I've got six matches down here that I think will happen. So I just want your kind of thoughts on some of these. Um, it looks like we're going to get Adam Cole defending this championship against Velveteen Dream. I think all indications are that that match is going to go ahead. Um, and then Keith Lee, I think the way they set up this week's NXT is possibly looking likely that he's going to defend his championship in a multi-man match. I've got down here that he could be defended against Damian Priest and Dominic Djokovic, you threw in Cameron Grimes, so I'm more than happy for it to be a three-way or a four-way match. Uh, then you've got the, the Bros of Weights defending their championship against Undisputed Era and uh, GYV in a three-way tag match there, so that'll be pretty epic. We obviously know we've got the, the women's number one contenders ladder match. We've got Chelsea Green, uh, Mia Yim and Tiga Knox as the first three entries in that. Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa I think will take place in Tampa. Now I'm going to throw in another match that there's been a lot of speculation as to whether this is going to take place in Tampa or possibly Dublin, but I've got Walter versus Finn Balor to take place in Dublin. Um, what was your thoughts on kind of that lineup, that that card? Um, I mean, and just kind of taking it one step further, I think Walter is going to be defended against Ilya Dragunov in Dublin, which is why I think it's going to be Balor in Tampa. But uh, those six matches, um, is that a good takeover for you? Um, yeah, it would be. It would be nice to have um, the Walter um, Finn Balor match in Dublin just because of the reaction of the Dublin crowd. Yeah. And obviously Finn Balor, it's as close to his hometown as you can get. Um, I'm sure someone from, you know, Bray County Island will, you know, Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I am those six matches already. I am already more invested in than the majority of the WrestleMania card. So for me, it's automatically a winner. Um, and I think that's the problem that I have is that I'm not invested in the main roster anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. I do have my concerns a little bit about Adam Cole versus the Velveteen Dream. Is it too soon for the Velveteen Dream? You know, I mean, I think he's only 24, 25. Yeah. You know, is it too soon for him? Could it not go to somebody else? I don't know. But it would be interesting to see what happens then with the Undisputed Era. um, Because we know what's going to happen after WrestleMania, if WrestleMania goes ahead, you've got the draft coming up. So then it's a case of, well, who's going to get the call up? Who's going to get called up? Um, who's going it's to got get... to be their time. It's long overdue, isn't it, for Adam Cole and the rest of the UE to be uh, on, on one of the other two brands, uh, the sideways move to Raw SmackDown. I think it's long overdue, and I think it, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen uh, after after Mania, and I think that, that d- does indicate there could be a title change in that main event. Yeah. Um, you know, and if, if certainly, because obviously people like ourselves sit here in fantasy book, yeah. They might do it where Adam Cole retains and then loses it on a live episode of uh, NXT to prove that it's still worth watching the NXT shows just because, as JR used to say, anything can happen uh, yeah. in the World Wrestling Federation, which straight away, if you've played the game, you know what game I'm on about. Um, Smackdown 2, I think it is. Um, and it's it starts off and uh, JR says, ladies and gentlemen, this is proof anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation, which is pretty much the soundtrack to my teenage years. But there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the only sort of concern that I have. It will be interesting to see where the uh, women's title match goes. Will they keep the title on Rhea? Will they keep you know, will they have 
Charlotte go to NXT? I don't know. Especially given her relationship with uh, CN Almas. Yeah. Um, could that lead to him and Selena Vega being split and then Selena Vega aligning with her real life husband, Alistair Black? Yeah. Don't know. Is it, quote, too soon for CN to go back to NXT? Um, I say it like it's a negative thing, but, you know, he's not been on the main roster long. He's currently the um, US champ. I don't know is the honest answer. There's so much that I can be like, oh, well, this could happen or that could happen. So it's an interesting time all round. It is. And I think one thing is for certain. I mean, I I said, you know, will these six matches deliver? I I don't know about you, but I've never seen a bad NXT takeover. So no doubt, you know, he's going to deliver. So uh, I think that's going to be the the show of the week, the show of the weekend, certainly from a WWE standpoint that we're all going to be talking about on Monday morning. Um, And uh, I I really can't wait. Uh, Like I say, just fingers crossed going back to the top of the show. I just really want it to go ahead. I want everything to, to go as planned. 